Do you want to create an entity relationship diagram for a MySQL database? You can do this within MySQL Workbench quite easily. You can create a diagram from an existing MySQL database or create a diagram from scratch and then generate the SQL for it. In this video, I'll show you how to do both of these. Welcome to the Database Star YouTube channel, the place for developers looking to improve their database and SQL skills. We'll start with generating an ERD from an existing MySQL database. I'll assume you have both MySQL Workbench installed and a MySQL database that you can access. If not, you can watch some of my other videos on how to do this. Open MySQL Workbench, then go to the Database menu and select Reverse Engineer. You could also use the keyboard shortcut which is Command-M on a Mac or Control-M on Windows. The Reverse Engineer database window will appear. Select the connection you want to use in the Stored Connection drop-down, which is a connection you've already set up in MySQL Workbench. You shouldn't need to change any of the other settings. Click Continue. On the next page, a few tasks are executed including getting the schema list from the database. This should finish in a few seconds, and then click Continue. The next screen is called Select Schemas to Reverse Engineer. This is where you can select the schema or schemas you want to include in your diagram. In this example, we'll just choose one, but if you have multiple schemas that are related, you may want to choose more than one. We'll choose the Netflix one here, as that one has quite a few tables that I've set up. Once you select a schema, click Continue. Some more data is loaded on the next screen. Click Continue. This screen is called Select Objects to Reverse Engineer. We see a checkbox next to Import MySQL Table Objects, and below it, we can see there are nine total objects and nine selected. To see more information about these, click on the Show Filter button. We can see there is a list of the tables included in the Reverse Engineer or Diagram Creation process. If you want to exclude some tables, you can do that by moving them from the left panel to the right panel. At the bottom, there is a checkbox labelled Place Imported Objects on a Diagram. Leave this checked. Click Execute. After a moment, the diagram will be created. Click Continue. On the next screen that shows the results, click Close. Your diagram is now created. A new tab is shown in MySQL Workbench called EER Diagram. This is where your diagram has been created. All of the tables have been added and organised so they don't overlap each other. It's not the best organisation because you can see some lines that go over each other, which we could try to avoid. I'll show you how to move them around soon. For each table on the diagram, we have a small icon, then the table name, and an arrow that lets you expand and collapse the table. You can click the arrow and the table collapses, and click it again to expand it. Inside each table, we have a list of columns defined. For each of the columns, we have an icon, the column name, and then the data type and size. The icon for each column is a yellow key if it's a primary key, a red diamond if it's a foreign key, and a blue diamond for other regular columns. The relationships between tables are visualised using these dashed lines. There are icons shown at the end of these lines. These are called crow's foot notation, and they indicate how many of each record can be related to another record. On this diagram we have the two lines which mean minimum 1 and maximum 1, and the line and triangle thing here which means minimum 1 and maximum of many. This essentially means a one-to-many relationship, which is how the primary and foreign keys are related between tables. If you don't like how the tables are organised, you can click on the table. When you hover or click on it, you'll see some things appear in green or blue. For the columns in the selected table that are foreign keys, they are highlighted in green, as well as their relationships, the related tables and columns in the other table. For the columns in the selected table that are primary keys, they are highlighted in blue, as well as their relationships, the related tables and columns in the other table. This is a pretty handy feature to help with understanding a diagram. You can drag it to another place on the diagram. This allows you to move tables around the screen so the layout looks better for you. The toolbar in this EER diagram section has a few buttons on it. The first button is New Document and lets you create a new document for a new diagram. The second button is Open and lets you open a diagram from a file. The next button is Save. If you click Save, you can save the file as an MWB file on your computer. This will let you open it again later. 
We then have an undo and redo button for undoing or redoing changes you make to the diagram. The next button will toggle the grid on the background on or off. The button after that will align objects to the grid, making the diagram a little neater when you rearrange items. The final button is add new diagram. This will let you create another diagram in the same document. It can seem a little confusing with the concept of a document, a diagram and the tabs. But from what I understand, a document relates to an MWB file, which can contain multiple diagrams. In the diagram editor, there's also a left sidebar with several buttons. There is a range of buttons here for moving around the diagram, deleting objects and adding tables and views. This is helpful when you create a new ERD from scratch. You don't always need to generate a diagram from an existing database. You can create one from scratch. Let's try that now. We'll click on the Add New Diagram button here, and a new tab is opened with a blank diagram. Click on the New Table button, then click on the diagram. A new table is added to the diagram. Double click on this new table and a panel is opened at the bottom of the window. There is a lot of information at the bottom. It starts with the table name which you can enter. We'll call our new table Customer. The next section is for columns. Click in the row under the column heading here and you can enter a new column. You can select the data type and select if it's primary key, the PK. If it has a not null constraint, the NN. If it needs a unique constraint, which is the UQ. You can also mark the column as binary, the bin checkbox. Mark the column as unsigned, the UN checkbox. Mark it as zero fill, the ZF checkbox. Mark the column as auto increment, which is popular for primary keys, the AI checkbox or mark the column as a generated column, the G checkbox. If it's easier, you can check the boxes on the bottom right which have the full names of the terms. Once you've specified these options, you can add comments in the bottom section and specify a default for them. On the tabs at the bottom of the window, you can add more options to the table. You can specify indexes on the diagram. The next tab lets you specify or view foreign keys. You can add triggers as well on the triggers tab. You can enable partitioning on the table, specify further options on the options tab, specify data to insert, and specify privileges. I won't go into all the details of these tabs, but they are there if you need to specify them. Let's add a new column now called customer name before we move on. Once you've created your diagram, you can generate SQL to create the database, which is a very helpful feature. To do this, you can right click on a table and select Copy SQL to Clipboard. The SQL to create this table is then added to the clipboard. You can go back to your connection if you have one open or another text editor and paste the SQL. Here is another editor tab I have open. When I paste it, I can see the create table here. We can see it also includes if not exists, which will only run the statement if the table doesn't already exist. We also see the primary key and the engine used for the table. If you go back to the diagram, there are a few other copy SQL options when you right click on the table. You can select copy inserts to clipboard. This will copy the data from the inserts tab from the bottom of the screen into an insert statement. We haven't added that, so nothing will be done here. If you select copy column names to clipboard and paste that into a new editor, You'll see the names of the columns separated by a comma. This is helpful for writing select queries or insert queries, for example, when you need the column names. Finally, if you select Copy Insert Template to Clipboard, you can paste that into a new editor. When you do, you'll get an insert statement where you can add in values to the insert statement and then run it to add data to your table. Each of these statements can save you time if you need to write some SQL. But what if you have an ERD with a few tables or a lot of tables and want to generate the SQL to create the database for this? You can do this quite easily in MySQL Workbench using a feature called Forward Engineering. To do this, go to the File menu, then Export, then Forward Engineer SQL Create Script. A wizard will be shown where you can generate an SQL script. On the SQL Export Options window, you're asked for a file to save the output to. This is the SQL script generated by this process. Click on the three dots and specify a file name and location for your file, and click Save. On this screen, you're also given a range of options to select your SQL file. You can leave them all unchecked by default to see what it looks like, 
or you may want to check some that would be useful to you. In this example, we'll leave them all unchecked and click continue. On the SQL object export filter, there is a small box for each of the object types in the database. In this example, there are a few different objects, but there are none on my diagram, so they all say zero total objects. The top section refers to tables and there are 10 tables, which includes the nine from the Netflix diagram and the one new customer table I created. Click on show filter and you can remove the tables from the export. In this example, I only want to include the customer table, so I'll exclude all other tables. Click continue. The next screen is the review generated script screen. We can see all of the commands, including create schema, then use the database and create table. You can copy the script to the clipboard if you like, if you want to edit it in another program. You can save it to another file, but the file will be saved to the location you specified in the first step. Click finish. The file is then created. You can then open it in another program or in MySQL Workbench. To open it, go back to an editor window and go to File and then open SQL Script. Select your file and then click Open. A new tab is opened with a generated SQL script. This can then be run to create your database and tables. So that's how you can work with the entity relationship diagrams in MySQL Workbench. If you want to learn more about MySQL Workbench, check out my tutorial video here. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.